Many thanks for joining us on another edition of The Experts Say. I am your host, Marianne Weisha, and on this edition of The Experts Say, I am excited to be joined by Max and Ellen Schupak, the co-founders of the Deep Democracy Institute. They've been here before, but they let us know uh, a bit about what they do, about the institute that they run, and how we can benefit from the teachings that they bring to Kenya and that they spread around the world. So perhaps, Ellen, you can... Um, you can start by telling us about the Deep Democracy Institute. But I think, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for coming in so for, the, uh, for this interview, for mm -hmm. you know making time to come and teach us some yeah. more. So yeah. both of you, I say thank you. Thank it's you. So beautiful. It's really touching. Thank you so much for having us. We, and it's a big privilege and pleasure to get to be with you and learn and share together. So thanks a lot. We yeah. love being here. It's amazing. We really love being here. We loved the last time we were here. And um, I think your show brings in so many aspects of health. It's really amazing. Mm, it's really, really exciting. And um, thanks. All right. It's great to have your wisdom. And I think we'll pick into that wisdom as we go along. Okay. But um, this is not the first time you've been here. The last time you were here, you talked about the Institute and um, what you do, where you're based, what your goals are. Huh? But you know, for the sake of those who are na not able to watch the last program that we did. Give us a bit of that about the Institute and what your goals are in all the trainings that you do. Okay, thanks. So um, we, are, we are Training Institute. We are also other things, a think tank and research group. But we're also Training Institute and we call it leadership training, although it's a larger sort of type of leadership. It includes psychology, it mm -hmm. includes health, uh, conflict resolution, personal vision. And so we are working in different places in the world where I would say we are learning together with other people about how can you express in the most joyful and maybe useful way who you are in the context of your own life. In the life. context that you are. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know if they have anything to add to the institutes. Perfect. Overview. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Max, perhaps we could start with you. Um, one of the key words with your training, you do training, you do coaching. Mm -hmm. Uh, we could also go into the difference between that. But one of the key words in all the work that you do is mm -hmm. process work mm -hmm. because you talk about process-oriented yep. training, process-oriented coaching. <coughs> what do you mean by process? Mm -hmm. You know, we know what training is mm -hmm. and we've all gone through some form of coaching. Mm -hmm. But the key word process in there. Well, deep democracy and process work are concepts that were developed by uh, <coughs> American um, physicists and psychologists. Arnold Mindel, mm -hmm. and um, it's a complex and interesting, in my mind, of course, interesting framework. And um, the, maybe the key that uh, I want to focus on this afternoon, especially with you, is um, that if you have any disturbances in your life, which or everyone does inevitably. <laughs> Sooner or later, yeah. <laughs> sooner or later. Yeah. Uh, but also if a team or a group, an organization has any kind of disturbances, that uh, behind what looks like a problem at the first glance, things always look like a problem. And our first step is always, let's get rid of the problem. Mm -hmm. And process-oriented process work says behind what appears to be problems is a meaningful occurrence, mm -hmm. or if you want to say, an emerging new reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a new approach to look at disturbances and problems all along. So uh, it's a holistic idea, meaning um, health mm -hmm. is an uh, English word that comes from whole, meaning yes. to be whole. whole. Okay. Uh, so when you don't feel healthy or whole, you feel fragmented. You feel your life, you don't understand the different pieces of your life. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the different pieces in your organization. You don't understand what your body is doing. You have like one part is doing this, another part is, is doing this. And they don't seem to be in conjunction. No. Mm -hmm. That's why people, you ask people, for example, you say, how are you? And people can say, well, I am well, but I have a headache. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, wait a moment. Then you I am well, well, and then 
And then who is who who owns your head? <laughs> Whose head is, Whose head is on it? your body <laughs> <laughs> sitting on top? <laughs> so uh, so that's the idea of process oriented, and the idea that if you get into this meaning and the patterns, what unfolds is a story or a song. That's mm -hmm. why we call it process oriented. Mm -hmm. We don't primarily believe in single stopped Polaroid frame type of solutions. Mm -hmm. Here is a problem, here is the solution, but we think problems are complex, they're connected to many things, and solutions are a process. They mm -hmm. take time, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing because in the time is a story that unfolds. All right. So how would you, if you were to, you know, create a contrast, how does that contrast with the ordinary problem solving skills that mm -hmm. you know that we grow up with okay mm -hmm. well a lot of us have grown up looking at problems more in terms of like let's say car mechanics mm -hmm. you have like a mechanical issue it, it, it it's uh, it's like what classical physics has been teaching and how we're all thinking that's still a valuable system we are not saying this is not a good system it's just only part of reality so we think this is a car, the car is a problem, has a flat tire. Mm -hmm. So what we gotta do is we gotta pump the tire up or we have to exchange the wheel. Yeah. For example, a flat tire is like in the morning, you sometimes wake up and you notice yes. you have a flat tire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the air pump is for example, a coffee, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. So the analogy is we feel our tires are a little flat so you you pour some coffee into it, some more gas, mm -hmm. more octane mm -hmm. gas, and then you can work mm -hmm. more. And we say, oh, hang on for a moment. That's good. Coffee is good, especially as long as it's Kenyan coffee, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then comes the next step, which is interesting. What you call low energy describe us, and I think we did that the last time in the show, then it shows that Maybe it just means you have to go slower through the day or with more feeling. We don't know yet. Mm. But what people call low energy is a good thing. Okay. So from what he's saying, Ellen, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> does that mean that we shouldn't, I mean, that we are wrong to see problems as negative? I mean, challenges, whether health or, what, or otherwise, mm -hmm. as negative? That's a great question. Thanks. Well. I wouldn't want to say we are wrong to do that, but what I would want to say is again and again to discover that what seems to be a problem which is negative actually, or which one experiences as negative, actually has a lot of even wonderful things in it. New information that we weren't aware of before, new ways of experiencing ourselves. Even that, like in the day, it's another way of going through the day. You have low energy. Oh, maybe I'll be a little more centered or quiet today. Or So there's a lot of information that's sort of waiting for us to enjoy in a way. Mm -hmm. Yet we look at it as a not so good thing. So I think the first is maybe normal, or I, I it certainly is for me to think, oh, I don't like that. And then, but then to think, oh, that's I a could sign I it. could now embrace mm -hmm. it and work with it. All right. Okay. So let's now go into, yeah, we're talking about general problems, but now into, you know, the main topic for today. We're talking about conflict. Mm -hmm. And one of the main areas of conflict that is a big problem mm -hmm. is the conflict in the workplace. Yeah, huge. And it's a really, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a difficult problem for many mm -hmm. people because the, of the nature of... Of, of this problem because mm -hmm. the workplace is a place that one cannot quite escape. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be there every day and you True. have to deal with whatever True. it is. True. Um, so before we go into, you know, what you're going to coach us on, on how to deal with this kind of problem, mm -hmm. how big is this problem? Because, you know, just from reading, mm -hmm. a lot of writers and scholars say it's actually a very, very big problem. But what mm -hmm. have you seen from your work mm -hmm. and how big would you say it is? Mm -hmm. Well, you're looking at me. In my mind now, if uh, I don't know enough about um, Kenya, mm -hmm. but uh, in some areas where we've been working longer, like uh, Russia, uh, Ukraine, Europe, United States, uh, my experience is that actually um, most 
work-related issues that appear, mm -hmm. uh, be it work efficiency, be it productivity, be it uh, creativity, just uh, the, the ability to innovate, mm -hmm. um, corporate health or, or, or organizational health, addictions that are present in a given uh, organization or team mm -hmm. are in the background, if not due to at least linked to unresolved conflicts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a global issue mm -hmm. that uh, goes through the board because, uh, let me just say that right now while my mouth is open, because I barely know a culture which has or believes that conflict is, among other things, a healthy and That's acceptable uh, phenomenon of life mm -hmm. and therefore teaches um, proper tools to work on it. Like, for example, now most people know you, sh you can't just eat what you want. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, but it, it costs. Has consequences. It has yeah. consequences. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> most people now in, um, in your generation are aware of the fact that, for example, exercising can generally be a good thing for life. Yeah. No? She's like barely you talk to anyone, people know this a little bit. Talk to a lot of young people here in Nairobi and a lot of them <coughs> jog or at least feel guilty that they that don't. They didn't, yeah, that's <laughs> a majority, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a yeah. beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, but we don't feel like, oh my God, we don't have, we know we should exercise and we should do something, we should be careful what we eat. We don't think it's as important or more important for our health to deal with conflict mm. because um, that's just emerging. So I think it's a global issue. So mm -hmm. I'm really glad we have a chance to talk about, to talk that about today. it. Mm -hmm. In fact, one person, I had one person say that this is actually a global epidemic. Mm -hmm. And I think just uh -huh. those terms, mm -hmm. you know, give us the magnitude of the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in just about every culture mm -hmm. you think of. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether, Ellen, you would have some examples, you know, with the, all the places you've worked in, the, in around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, either clients you've had or people you've met mm -hmm. who've had situations w that of, of this nature, you know, workplace stress and workplace mm -hmm. conflicts that cause so much stress. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being such a big problem. Yeah. Would you have, you know, some case Example. studies that you've had? Yeah. I mean, I would say, first of all, I'd say so many. I think many people f in one way or another struggle and suffer from that. And I wanted to say, I'm just also grateful that it's being named as a global uh, epidemic, epidemic uh -huh. because that allows them to work with it mm -hmm. and to notice mm -hmm. it. Because before is something of, you just sort of have to live with it. That's life or that's mm -hmm. normal. So, um, so, so, that's a good thing. So, so just want to quickly add here. Yeah. So uh, um, health and stress reduction is part of what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the fact if nothing else happens, out of this evening that if you are watching this and you are hearing, oh, I have a conflict at my work, it's stressful, it's painful, it's difficult, you're not alone, you're sharing this with a large, it's nothing wrong with you, you're sharing that with a large part of population, mm. you might not quite know what to do with it, but barely anybody knows quite what to do with exactly. it. Exactly, that's a big So project. that's already should mm. be a relief. Mm. So, so I just want to mention that. that. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the isolation that comes mm -hmm. also from not feeling you have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe I could say a specific thing about some, for example, there's a conflict, it's uh, perseverating, it's continuing, it's not getting resolved. That affects, for example, if I think of a person in mind, it affects a basic mood, a basic attitude, a spirit. You don't quite want to get up in the morning, mm -hmm. maybe even starts with maybe another cup of coffee, even something that don't quite want to go to work, don't. And then by the end of the day, um, it, I'm, I'm linking it to addictions, but mm -hmm. even subtle things, but maybe alcohol can be uh, definitely come around and in play. As and a result of this being continuous. Yeah, continuous mm -hmm. and not seem and a, a mm -hmm. something of a hopelessness around it. So, and a lack of ability to speak about, so. And a feeling of not knowing what to do about it. So Ellen mentioned addictions, which mm -hmm. is, I think, a big problem everywhere. It is a big mm -hmm. problem in Kenya. Mm -hmm. everywhere. 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 Okay. Everywhere. So she's mentioned addictions, you know, mm -hmm. that one would end up, you know, being mm -hmm. addicted to something or other as mm -hmm. a result of whatever 
mm -hmm. conflict that they mm -hmm. have that they haven't dealt with what else have you seen being mm -hmm. consequences especially you know consequences that have to do with a person's wellness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well let me say one more sentence about the addiction part in uh, our process work approach we believe that everybody has at least two addictive type of tendencies mm -hmm. um, what we call everybody has an, an, an upper tendency and the downer tendency. Mm -hmm. Like what you just mentioned, you have co cough, cough in the morning, mm -hmm. that's an upper. Mm -hmm. ah. And then you have a beer in the evening, that's a downer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how this is uh, in Kenya. I know it's in money, we work in many Muslim groups where it looks very different. But in the United States, you can barely look at a movie mm. where in, on television where you don't see in very popular shows that, uh, you know, like those uh, weekly shows that... Mm -hmm. uh, series. Series. Yeah. Th something happens that's stressful, and the first thing people do is they pour themselves yeah. a glass of and wine. And often it's work-related, by the way. Work-related. Yeah. yeah. And it's considered normal. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody needs to know what's right for them and when, but it's an issue that also is not being spoken about. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sorry because I was still there. That's an important thing too. If you struggle or deal with your own addictive tendencies, you should think that, uh, for example, in Native American communities, the Aboriginal uh, inhabitants of uh, uh, America, there frequently used to be an idea, uh, a concept that in the morning, um, people or the, the medicine men would go uh, around and look and see how many tobacco pieces were in front of the tipis, whatever, because how much people would consume would tell him something about the health of the community. Mm -hmm. So to deal with addictions as individual problems only mm -hmm. uh, takes away from community health. These are community health issues. Mm -hmm. And to deal with stress on an individual basis also, in my mind, uh, neglects uh, the community issue of all of this mm -hmm. thing. And Africa, in my mind, or Kenya, I should say, it's not true for Africa as a whole, but Kenya, our experience is that Kenyans are amazingly strong community builders. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, Africans generally. Africans mm -hmm. generally, but mm -hmm. especially also Kenyans, mm -hmm. have an amazingly warm, welcoming spirit, while at the same time being very strong and, and courageous and tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I feel that Africa has a lot to contribute, obviously, uh, to global health issues around those community mm -hmm. issues. A lot of the uh, stress issues that we actually observe in the United States or in Europe come partially through isolation and not being able to have a community yeah. or being able to build a community mm -hmm. that uh, is able to help deal to with help, all of that. To help individuals. Yeah. It's a huge thing. And so you're talking about uh, what, Ellen, you said that there's, a lot with a lot of people and this problem that we're talking about, there's this feeling of isolation of people feeling, you know, this is just me mm -hmm. and, you know. Um, so then, what then would one do? What would you tell one? Or what would be, what would you coach a person with this kind of issue mm -hmm. to, to do? Or how, what's the right way to deal with it? Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Let me think how to answer that. Well, I think first... I, I have to say, I don't think, I don't know of a right way to deal with it, but one way, first of all, this, the awareness and the idea that that's not an individual, like the pathology around it too, I think is, for me, that's a, a really key thing with everything actually, but to think what's wrong with me now, I have this, then in a way yourself and the community turns even against you. Turns you, you and, and begin to see things that are actually not there. I, and yeah. you don't feel like there's not an inner or an outer support for that. So I think that, for me, that's maybe even the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And then out of this coming, okay, so how can we work with the situation? And then I think once, at the moment I feel, once that um, field is, is set, then comes the rest is sort of not so difficult. Mm -hmm. But getting to the point where you can actually find, see, there, there's an issue, it's really difficult and I'm suffering from it, now what can I do with it? Then you can work with that conflict in many ways. Mm -hmm. Like let's suppose, for example, I was a person, 
I'm thinking um, of my own private practice and I mm -hmm. would come to you, you're my pastor, and say, what should I do? I have this issue. Uh, I'm coming into my workplace and I feel the moment I come into my workplace, it's actually not just one person, mm. but I feel my entire team, they're giggling, they're laughing, they all look like they're having a good time. Mm. The moment I come, come in, there is a mood change or they still talk. And then if I say little things like barely noticeable thing, I think like, where is the coffee or so? I don't really get an answer. Mm. And I try to talk to people, but uh, nobody ever gives me a straight answer. Mm. Do you ever have anything like this or are you thinking maybe are there more open conflicts that you have like fights a lot in your work? No, 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 not fights, but like what you're talking about mm -hmm. of, of, you know, people feeling mm -hmm. that's hard, the, you know, the isolation feelings mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. But like Ellen said that the first step is to, you know, to, to, to realize that mm -hmm. that is a problem and feel that it's, it is a common problem yep. and therefore how, how to deal nice. with it. Yeah. yeah. And I think the good part is that we are going to actually be doing some process oh. work. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. yes. work with someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the second part. So mm -hmm. I think we can wait for that. Okay. All okay. right. Well, we'll be right back. We'll be taking a short break. But after that, in the second part of the experts say, Max and Ellen will be doing some process work with our colleague. And um, keep watching so you can learn what they're saying practically. Um, keep watching. <laughs> 